Uh, we are jumping into 21 days of prayer and fact. Excuse me, fasting, almost choked. Uh, Today, right now, it's the first day. Anybody feel a little like nervous about this? Anybody feel a little nervous jumping in like beforehand? Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? What's this going to be like? 21 days of giving something up? I don't think so. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, there's some challenges that come with this. Amen? It's, it's, it's a little bit different. And so today I figured it'd be cool for us to jump in and just talk about this. Talk about this thing that we started today and say, hey, what does God say about this thing that as a family, as a church, we are journeying into and experiencing? What is God wanting to do in my life over these next 21 days? That's the plan. We're going to talk about that. And to start that, I want to ask you a question. Uh, has anybody in here ever tried to do something, okay? Like a task ahead of you. Have you ever tried to jump in and accomplish a task without actually knowing how to accomplish that task? Everybody said amen, right? You're like, that's called life, (laughs) right? But specifically, you know what I'm saying? Like parents, come on. You're like, how do I do this, God? Why have you blessed me in such a great way? (laughs) There's so many things. It is life just in itself, right? I want to give you a little bit of a story. So um, Rachel and I, uh, Rachel is a creative genius, okay? I'll just say that. My wife is very good at making things look really good, okay? Uh, And so she does that a lot in our home. Uh, She's like, hey, we should do this to this wall. We should change it to these things. We should paint it this color. And I'm like, Sure, because I, I have no idea. You know what I mean? I like to have opinions. That's the truth, okay? That's, that's, it's not fully true, because I'll be like, well, what about this? And then later on, I'm like, we shouldn't have done my idea. We should have done yours. You know what I mean? But Rachel's really good at this. And so what that means is there's, somebody needs to get some stuff done, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And Rachel's super handy, too, but there's things that she's like, hey, can you take care of this for me? So I've had to learn how to become a handyman, and that's quotes because I'm learning, and I'm not super good at it, okay? But we're, we're growing, we're learning, uh, and it, it's, it's fun because I get, I get a lot of opportunity because Rachel's the person who goes, oh, I like this, and then six months later, she's like, I hate that, <laughs> and I'm like, why, <laughs> you know? So we do it again, but a different way. Well, one thing uh, in our house that I've had the pleasure of learning how to do is hang doors. Anybody enjoy hanging doors in here? No hands, please. If so, we're praying for you because that's not true. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's tough, okay? Maybe for some of you, you're like, no, I'm just good at it. I'm gifted. You know, God bless me with hanging doors. It's like, cool, I please show me. But I had the task of hanging a door. I had done it before with some help, okay? And also like all, every groove was cut out. The door was just ready, perfect fit. It was like easy peasy, right? Well, this one needed some work. It's into our guest room in our house right when you walk in the front door, uh, which means everybody was gonna see it. And I was like, oh, I got this. Rachel's like, hey, we should get somebody. And I was like, no, 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 no. This is somebody. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to get this door hung right. Again, never done this by myself. This was way different. Had to cut all the grooves into the actual door, into the frame, move some stuff so that, you know, the the hinges could fit right, move the doorknob, all that kind of stuff. So I got after it. And let me just tell you, folks, it was terrible. (laughs) I did not do a good job on this door. When I finished and stepped back, the handle was right here. I don't even know what happened, okay? It was literally the door was upside down. Like the latch where it was supposed to be was like four feet off from where it actually was. It was terrible. And like I heard Rachel moving around, so I quickly undid the door. It was like, you know, I was like, I can't let her know that I don't know what I'm doing. Have you ever been there? No. Not that. <laughs> it's just you, bro. But have you ever been in a situation where you jumped into something, maybe a little confident, I could take care of this, but what you lacked is understanding on how. I don't actually understand how to do this thing. How many other examples are there, right? Think of work. Are there things that work that you're like, hey, I've been given this task. I have no idea how to actually do this thing. I have no understanding of how this is supposed to work, what it's supposed to look like. Relationships, amen? Such a real thing. It's not just this physical work. It's not just, you know, tasks ahead, but how do I interact with people? Sometimes we don't know how. We don't understand how to jump into a situation with somebody because we don't fully understand that person. And if we're not careful, that relationship gets a little wonky too. Amen? Just about any area of life has these opportunities for us to jump in with a lack of understanding. And to be very specific, I think this conversation on prayer and fasting involved in our walk with Jesus is one of those things as well. It's a place in our lives right? And, and, and there's other areas in our walk with Jesus as well, where if we don't have some understanding into what we're jumping into, what, what we're saying yes to, it can get a little weird. Things might not turn out the way that we had hoped that they would. 
So I believe that this principle specifically applies, uh, applies to prayer and fasting in these 21 days that we're entering into. I think there are questions that we have about prayer and fasting. That's why we hand out those pamphlets and those bulletins and stuff is because we're like, hey, we get it. There's lots of question marks. And depending on who you're talking to, you might get a different answer, right? You might have heard different things, grew up learning different things about how this is supposed to look over these next 21 days in your life. And prayer and fasting as a whole, they can be tough. This can be tough this season, Two reasons I think that prayer and fasting brings difficulty. One, it just is in itself a challenge, right? We're supposed to eliminate something. And in a second, we're going to get into the definition, right, of prayer and fasting. But when it comes to prayer and fasting, specifically fasting, we're called to give something up, right? Put something to the side for a specific amount of time. That's tough. Depending on what you give up, if you're like me, you look at that thing and go, can I actually do this? Like, am I able to get to these next 21 days without that thing? I used to run cross country, like, way a long time ago, okay? <laughs> You're like, how? Yeah, it was a while back. But one of the things I, I remember vividly is before every race, and I think a lot of us can relate to this depending on anything that we're jumping into. It's like I would sit at the, at the start line, and my heart would be pounding in my chest. And the question I was asking myself is, can I do this? Can I, can I complete this race? Can I do it well? Or am I just going to, like, quit midway through? Is this something I can actually accomplish? Have you ever been there? Right? It's a challenge. There's challenge to it. The other side uh, that, that makes fasting pretty difficult is, again, we don't fully understand it. We don't really know all the things that we're jumping into, or we might not. What are we doing? Why am I actually doing this? Well, like, I don't see in Scripture, Pastor Ricky, where it says that we have to fast, right? And I feel like if there's something super important, God's like, hey, you should get after this thing, right? Which, which there is scripture that points us and leads us to that, you know, that, that, that we ought to be doing this. It's, it's a benefit to our relationship with Jesus. But what is it? I need to understand because if I don't have the understanding with prayer and fasting, then when I come out 21 days, the door might be upside down. Amen. I might come out going, well, God, this isn't what I expected it to be. I was hoping for this experience. God, I was hoping to draw close to you. I was hoping for, for some life change, for some breakthrough, for some provision and guidance. And I'll tell you the truth, I feel more lost. It's a very real place. It's a very real place. And, and I'll say this too. I don't, I don't compare prayer and fasting to the door to say that it's some complex, crazy thing that's gonna be really hard for us to understand. I don't believe God wants to make things super hard on us in that sense. I believe God wants to help us and simplify things for us and say, hey, this is a big deal, but it's something that we can absolutely walk, to, to get, walk through together and you can get a hold of it, amen? And so that's the goal of today is, to, is to, to bring some clarity, some understanding to prayer and fasting so that we can come out the other side of these 21 days, these three weeks where God has planned for us to be because he does, church. Every single person in this room, as we jump into this, as we decide I'm gonna do this with the Lord, God's laid this out and said, hey, I've got some stuff for you here. I've got some growth, some purpose for you here, not just for you individually, but for the church as a whole. And so we're going to bring some clarity to this in hopes that we can have an amazing next three weeks as a family. So I want to bring some truth. And the first question, I want to answer some questions. The first one I want to do uh, is, what is it? Okay, what is fasting? I've got a definition for you uh, just to kind of summarize what we're doing uh, during these 21 days. So fasting, again, is the elimination of personal desires and distractions for a spiritual purpose. Fasting is taking some time to get rid of some things that we like to do in our daily lives. You know, watching TV, eating these foods, doing all this stuff, these other activities that take up time and saying, I'm going to be intentional and take that time that I've eliminated that stuff from and use it for a purpose between God and myself. Something that brings value and influence and impact to my relationship with Jesus. But first, I've got to put some things to the side, right? So again, one more time right there, uh, the elimination of personal desires and distractions for a spiritual purpose. So that's the big picture. And if that's the big picture, then the question is, how do we do this well? How do we do this in a way that is beneficial? How do we do this so the door doesn't end up upside down? I want to give you three things, three different needs of fasting. If you're taking notes, do it. Again, if you're not, do it. You should. It's good for you, right? But just to look back on, on these three weeks, what, what are the needs of my fasting time with the Lord? Three different needs. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take that definition and we're going to break it apart and pull out some different things that God has for us. So the first part of that definition we're going to look at is actually the end, because I think it's beneficial for us to first understand what we're after. It's that spiritual 
purpose. We're going to take those words and look at what the need is when it comes to spiritual purpose. So, so many times in fasting, we jump in and maybe our minds are a little unsettled. We're a little unsure of, hey, why am I actually doing this? I'm, I'm jumping into this time of prayer and fasting. I've said yes to it, but we don't really know what we're hoping to get out of this time in prayer and fasting. We don't really know what we're hoping to experience, right? Like a lot of times it's like, well, I just kind of did it because the rest of the church was doing it, you know? I don't want to be the odd, odd man out and people are like, oh, you're not fasting? It's like, no, oh, I, yeah, I am, you know? <laughs> or I, I'm, I'm doing it because it just seems like the, the Christian thing to do is every now and then I've got to check off the fasting box, you know? It's like I did that because Jesus says I ought to, right? But if we're being honest, those are a little unsettled. There's not this, this almost confident, direct, determined heart there that says, hey, I, I feel like God has called me to do this thing to the purpose of my fast. What I'm hoping to see after the 21 days is this in my relationship with Jesus. So the, the importance and the, the benefit I'm trying to get to is it's important for us to know what we're seeking from God and with God in this time. Another way to say it is we need a determined spiritual purpose. That's point number one. When it comes to fasting, the, need, the first need is a determined spiritual purpose, okay? Emphasis on the spiritual. So this could look like a, a few different things. One, it could look like breakthrough in my life. This could look like God coming in and changing my heart, doing new things. Maybe I'm stuck in this place of sin, okay? That's a very real thing. I'm stuck in these cycles, and I'm saying, God, I need to just, just devote this time. I'm going to put aside all the other stuff. I need you to come in and do it only you can. Change my heart, God. Bring freedom into my life, God. Bring change in my life. Make me who you've called me to be, not who I'm, who I'm struggling to, to, to hold on to, my own self, my own desires, God. I need breakthrough. I need provision, right? That's another one. I need guidance, God. I need your wisdom because I don't know how to figure this out. We need answers. How many times do we go to God and say, God, we need answers, right? On a hundred different things. Lord, we need answers. We need to know what's the next step to take. Where do I turn next, God? And the third thing is closeness. Pastor Josh had mentioned that. It's like we, we just want to be close, Jesus, I, I just I want, to, I want to set this stuff aside because truthfully, I feel like I'm maybe wandering through some wilderness right now. Maybe I'm in a desert, God, and I'm in a dry wasteland, and I just need you. I need the life water that you offer. I need, I need a, a rejuvenation of my spirit, God, of my walk with you. I just want to be close to you. I want to hear your voice clearly. I want to be in a beautiful, intimate, and awesome relationship with you. So I'm going to set this stuff aside. Determined spiritual purpose. So why does this matter? Okay. Why is it important that we have almost a goal, a direction that we're going? Because if we don't, we'll replace the spiritual purpose with a personal purpose. We'll go, hey, this, is, this went from between me and God, about me and God, to between me and me and about me and me, right? I just want to see something benefit come to, some, some benefit come to my life, and I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to come in and it's going to benefit me just, just for me. I haven't submitted this decision to the Lord. I'm just doing it how I think it needs to happen, not how God is calling me to make it happen. Does that make sense today, church? So we leave the spiritual and we go to the personal. This is Matthew 6. Jesus talking about prayer and fasting. And this is what he says. It's, it's, it's super good. It's, uh, verse 16 through 18. He says, when you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for, for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, excuse me, comb your hair and wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private and your father who sees everything will reward you, right? So Jesus gives this picture and he's like, there's these hypocrites, and what they're doing is they're making this whole experience that's supposed to be about their heavenly father and the connection to him and their growth in him about themselves. And they're like, look at how good of a Christian I am, right? It's just coming out in the public square, just robe on. <sighs> look at me. I'm fasting. Do you see what I've given up for the Lord? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if we're being super honest, that's a real thing. We might feel that in these 21 days of like, man, God, I'm just really trying to do this for you. And God's like, for me, <laughs> I don't need you to do anything for me, right? He doesn't need us to do anything. He loves us and wants to see us do these things, right? But we get it mixed up. And we're like, oh, this is just so hard. I don't know how. I'm just such a good Christian. Thank you, Lord, right? And Jesus is like, that's not it, bro. You're missing the point there. This is about you and your father. So when, you, when you're fasting, man, Get that hair combed over, straighten up, and go, God is good. 
and I'm just going on with my day. I'm living my daily life, but in, inside, people may not see it or know it, but I'm, I'm just here. I'm working with the Lord. We're getting after it. God is changing me. He's doing big things. I've set this thing aside, but I don't need to go share it to the world, right? And, and, and I'll say this quick disclaimer on that. that. Like, I think sometimes we read this, and we'll talk about this again later, but we read this and we're like, oh, I, I can't. Somebody's like, hey, you, uh, we're having burgers. You coming over? And you're like, uh, uh, I can't tell them. It's a sin. I can't tell them that I'm, I've given this thing up for the Lord. God's going to get mad. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, no, um, <laughs> I'm sick. You know what I mean? It's like coming up. Well, you just lied. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, which one is it? So do you, have you been there though? I have. Like so many times, like, dude, come on. Let's go get some food. I'm like, oh man, would you look at the time? <laughs> I don't believe that that's what, what, what Jesus is getting at here. I think he's saying, hey, I understand people are going to come up and, and, and it's okay to go, hey, here's what we're jumping into as a family. But where is the heart in the midst of this whole thing? Is the, is, am I doing this so that people go, wow, Ricky's a great Christian? Or am I doing it because I'm like, no, dude, I just, I can't do it without the Lord. And I want, I want to invite him into what's going on in my life. I, I've got places where I know that I can't figure this out. I mean, that's my whole life, but there's specific things. I really just felt like I needed to take some time and go, hey, God, please do what only you can do. And it's just about him. He gets the glory for it all, right? But we have to have the determined spiritual purpose because when we do that, when we leave the personal and we stick to the spiritual, right, we stay away from hypocrisy. We stay away from how, look how holy I am. And instead, we see the results and the plans that God has for us. We see the growth that he offers for us. We, we get what we needed and what we hoped for. The spiritual leads us to the door hung right. Amen? So with that being said, the question then is, what is your determined purpose? In these 21 days, have you discovered that, right? And it's like, I'm not trying to like get on anybody like, have you actually done it? Because we're already here. You're running behind. It's like, no, no, no. If you are, it's okay. I get it. There's questions. There's, again, back to the beginning. We got to understand. And so if you're like, I don't, I don't really know what I was jumping into it, take some time. Spend time with the Lord. Seek Jesus on this. Lord, I, I need to be close with you so I know what, I'm, what, what, your, what purpose I need to have in this time, God. So that it's actually glorifying you, God. It's, it's, it's what you actually have for me and not just what I want or may think I need for myself. So again, point number one, a determined spiritual purpose. My first need for fasting is a determined spiritual purpose. The second one, the second part we're going to break down uh, comes from that section of our uh, definition of fasting where it says the elimination of desires and distractions, right? The elimination of desires and distractions. So what's that, what that means simply, and we know this, like I said at the beginning, is in these 21 days, we've made the decision, I'm going to give some stuff up. I'm going to give something up. I'm going to set it aside, even though it may not be a bad thing, right? It's like, I, I may really enjoy eating this food. And it's like, it might not be a terrible thing for me, but I've realized that this thing is something I do often. And so I'm going to set it to the side, right? I'm going to give something up. I will say this, and the, and the point that I'm getting into is when we make that decision, if we feel like God is calling us to something, and that's where that importance comes in, making sure again, back to point number one, we're not just doing it ourselves, the thing that we're giving up, I believe, has to come with challenge. It's got to come with some weight to it. Amen? Like, it could be like, oh, I decided I wasn't going to tie my shoes for the 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> excuse me? Oh, hey, man, between, between you and the Lord, I guess, yeah, do your thing. But you, you, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's wild. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, there's got to be a challenge. Like, truthfully, I should go in there and go, man, I'm probably going to really want that thing here in a few days. Not because I, I want to feel tempted or overwhelmed or whatever, but because it brings dependence on the Father. And that's point number two right there is we need something when it comes to our fast. The second need is we need something that creates opportunity for dependence on God. Something that we go, oh, um, I, I could not for 21 days just give that up and go, oh, it's easy, I got it. If that's the case, you might look for something different. You know what I'm saying? Like we need something we gotta go, all right, God, this is tough. And I know I can't do this without you. The only way I persevere is if I lean on you, if I rely on you throughout this time. This is Matthew 4, verses one through two. It says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, amen. And the tempter, Satan came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Right? 
Let's break this down. Jesus goes in, right? So after he's been baptized, he goes into the wilderness. He's led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he's fasting through that time. This is right before he jumps in his three years of ministry. There's so much going on there. It's a beautiful thing to read through. It's really cool to see all the different things that God is doing in preparation and all the, th- it's, just, it's just huge, right? But one of the things we see is Jesus goes 40 days fasting. And it says he was hungry. At the end of the 40 days, he was hungry. We would be hungry, right? It's like, how is that even possible? Lord, it says at the end, in the, in the end of this whole uh, section where Jesus is going back and forth with Satan, right? And Jesus is, Satan's bringing the lies and Jesus is bringing the truth, right? He's bringing the word of God. And he's like, no, here's what the word says though. At the end, he says, be gone, Satan. Like, get away from me. The angels, some angels came and they attended to Jesus is what the scripture said. So what we see here is like, again, it says Jesus was, he was hungry. Like you think of hunger, we're going to fast. Some of us are fasting some food stuff. You're going to jump in At first, you're going to be hungry, right? And then your body's going to adapt a little bit. It's like, okay, a few days, I think I can actually do this. Like, I'm not, like, it's there, but it's not like, it's not like there. You know what I'm saying? After 40 days, a lot of people think, hey, Jesus had gotten to this place where he was hungry, his body had adapted for a little bit. But after 40 days of doing this, he was close to the point of, like, of starvation. He was starving to death. And so the angels showed up. They're like, they attended to the king. They were like, yo, he just went through it, right? And so how right on of Satan to show up and go, oh, you're hungry. First thing I'm going to offer you is some food, dude. Let me tempt you with the thing that you know you don't need the most right now that you've decided to put to the side. Can I just let you know, you probably will experience some of that in this time too. Does the enemy want you to spend really good, authentic 21 days of prayer and fasting with Jesus? Absolutely not. So the temptation will be real and it will be hard, okay? Okay. But Jesus doesn't give in to the temptation, and we are called to do the exact same thing. We're called to follow this example that Jesus sets before us. Does that mean that we should extend 21 days to 40, and I'll go to the refuge and just, like, let's get after it? You know what I mean? So I'm not saying that, okay? If God, if God calls you, prayer. You know, like, we're going to be lifting you up. But what this does mean is that we've got to choose something that leads us to be hungry, It's going to leave some hunger there. It's going to leave some want for that thing so that we can then go, I can't do this without you, Lord. Right? Psalm 73, 26 says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. In these moments, I'm able to rely on my heavenly Father, rely on his strength. God, be my nourishment. God, satisfy my hunger in a way that only you can, Lord, with closeness and time with you, not by actual bread alone, like Jesus says, Lord, but by your word, by your truth. I need you. I, I mean, I've, I think a lot of us have heard this kind of saying going up. It's like, hey, don't you worry. God will never give you something that you can't handle. Not true, folks. I'm just going to tell you today, that's not true. You're like, what do you mean? I don't mean that God's being mean. He's like, let's see how they deal with that. You know, it's like, but what I do believe is God loves us so much and he knows that we couldn't do this alone. He's going to be like, hey, lean on me. I'm going to allow these things in your life to happen so that you run to me. And I promise you, I will make a way. I will provide for you. I will give you the strength. I will give you the nourishment. I will give you all that you need. But you got to depend on me. So again, point number two is when it comes to fasting, our second need is, is an opportunity. We need opportunity for dependence. Bring challenge. And, and again, a, a quick disclaimer on that as well. I'm, I'm not saying that you've got to go home and, and, and revamp and say, well, the thing I had was not good enough. I've got to do something that's just is like, mm, you know what I'm saying? This is between you and the Lord. Seriously, that determined purpose is between you and the Lord. Spend time and let the Holy Spirit guide you into something that is, that is going to be of benefit, but that is healthy and right, right? Let God lead you in that so you can make the wise choice there because we do serve a God of care and wisdom as well. Point number three. This last point, uh, truthfully, is not necessarily uh, from our definition, but I believe it's encom- encompassed in both our first and second point. So let's read uh, the definition one more time. A period of time, fasting is a period of time involving the elimination of personal desires and distractions for a spiritual purpose. So oftentimes when we fast, we do the elimination part and that's it. Does that make sense? We, we jump in and we go, oh, I'm going to give something up for the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this thing and we stop doing that thing. And then we're just like, stopped it. That's it. We just sit in that place of, I eliminated that thing. We've moved something out. There's a void that needs to be filled. 
okay? There's something else that has to take place in that time. If we want the impact and the involvement of God in our fasting and in our prayer time, we've got to involve God. When we make space, we're making space for him. We're making space for time with him, right? Another way to say that is we eliminate and we bring in prayer. Some of you are always like, I thought this was about prayer and fasting. It's like, here's your prayer. We're at it now, right? Prayer and fasting. We need to come together with the Lord. We, we set aside. I'm not, at this time, from 6 to, 6 to 8 p.m., I usually watch TV. From 6 to 8, there's no TV. There's time with Jesus. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Usually I'm sitting at the table eating my food. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I have my Bible open at the table, and I'm spending time with Jesus. I'm talking to him. We have to get rid of the, we have to eliminate, but then to fill back up with whatever that is, the connection with the Lord. It's, the good news is that like you might be wondering like, well, why is it? Why, I, somebody asked the question, why does prayer and fasting, why do they go hand in hand? It's, it's something we see throughout, all throughout scripture. And I'll tell you why in a second, but look at these other examples uh, in Daniel, right? Daniel 9.3, it says, then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. The prophetess Anna in Luke, 20, uh, Luke 2, verse 37, says she did not depart from the temple. She spent all of her days in the temple worshiping with fasting and prayer, night and day. Nehemiah, when I heard this, Nehemiah 1, 4, when I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. They go hand in hand often. They're right next to it. There's, there's this picture. When you eliminate, you get rid of, you've got to feel that with time with him. Why is that? John 15, 4 through 8. Remain in me, this is Jesus, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them, and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. We have to have the connection with the Lord. We have to spend time with him, grow close to him. We can't just push out the things, the desires, the distractions and twiddle our thumbs and and do that. You know why? Because then it becomes personal again. Then the whole time I'm left trying to figure out how to satisfy my hunger in my own way. The whole time, I, I, I'm missing sight of what God might actually be trying to do in this time with him. Just to let you guys know, I, a couple years ago, I did, uh, I, should, I, probably, I should probably say longer than that so I look better, but um, it was a while back, a long time ago, um, I did a Daniel fast, and I'll just tell you the truth. It's two-week Daniel fast, right? And um, man, it was tough, okay? I jumped in, fruits and veggies, you know, getting after it, um, and the whole time, when I got rid of it, I struggled to spend time. I eliminated, but struggled to replace that time with Jesus, to be connected, to be the branch connected to the vine. I, I struggled really, really hard. So instead of spending time with him, I, I just constantly was like, how do I satisfy this hunger? Like, Lord, I just the whole time, it's like, uh, here you go, Lord, I, I got it. I gave it away. I'm just hungry, Lord. Lord, I'm hungry. You know, it's like, that's it. <laughs> I just, It hurts. And that's, that was it. And it's just, uh, uh, just trying to figure out ways to make it, you know. I couldn't, I'll be honest, church, I could not even tell you at this point what I had actually expected. The determined spiritual purpose, I couldn't tell you what I was moving forward in there, like what I was hoping for, what I was spending time with God on, because it just wasn't happening that way. I can tell you that I was so determined to get full that midnight, the day that the fast ended, I was in Taco Bell drive through right? <laughs> Wait, that's two bad choices in one. I did not feel good the next day. It's a real thing, though. All I did was, Lord, how, how do I feel the emptiness? Lord, how, I just, oh, God, I'm hungry. And he's like, dude, come spend time with me. I know you are. Let me be your nourishment. Let me fill that void. Spend time with me. What this is, is it's being intentional with Jesus. And that's point number three is we need devoted connection. Fasting needs devoted connection, connecting time with the Lord, being intentional and saying, hey, God, I... I'm going to eliminate this thing. And in those times, I'm going to schedule it. Like, I'm not even kidding. Open your calendars and go, okay, uh, I'm supposed to eat at that time. I'm supposed to watch TV at this time. This is when we normally do these things. So, boop, my phone reminds me, hey, it's time to spend time with the Lord. Just get practical with it, right? 
Set up the things, set up the, the, the help, the, the accountability there to make sure that we're being intentional, that we're spending that devoted time with the Lord because it's gonna get hard and we're gonna need to be reminded, right? You, instead of talking to the Lord, you're gonna start talking to the Oreos on the counter. You know what I mean? That's real. You know, you'd be like, hey, I'll be back, you know? <laughs> Soon. We have to have the devoted time. We have to spend time with Jesus. Jesus, give me your strength. Jesus, create a, create a clean heart of me, oh God. Like, come in and, and, and change me. B- build me up, God. Do what you want to do. God, I'm struggling here. Bring breakthrough here, Lord. But you can't, you can't expect dependence and strength from the Lord if you're not going to him and asking for it. Our God is not a forceful and pressureful God. He is gentle and kind. He is big and nothing compares to him. But he gives us the choice. He lets us open the door and he's like, if you want my help, I'm here. But you got to seek me. Seek me and you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. We got to spend that time with him. All right, so again, quick reminder. Let's run through it one more time. Three needs of fasting. Number one, a determined spiritual purpose. God, what's the direction of this time? Where I need to be going with this, Lord, so I'm not just making it about me. I'm not getting lost in the hypocrisy, God, that I'm actually experiencing the results that you have for me, God, the purpose that you have for me. I need to spend time with you and ask for your direction, your guidance, your purpose, God. It needs to be between you and I. Opportunity for dependence is number two. I got to lean on you, God. I need your help. I cannot do this without you, and I should set it up so that that is part of this equation, so that is part of what we're doing. And number three, I need devoted connection. I need to be with you. Time to connect, time to hang out. Like we said earlier, that's for some people, like that could be it. It's like, I'm doing, I'm doing this fast just so that I can connect with Jesus in a different way than I have been. And that's great. Praise God for that. So I want to give you just really quick um, some extra help. A uh, few things, and we're going to have them up here on the screen, a few things that you can take with you um, just as we jump into this. Real, real simple steps, guys, um, because it's important. It's important to be reminded of, the, of, of how to get through this because challenge will come, but this is good. Amen? Can we get excited about this? God's got good things in store for these next 21 days, and so a few extra things. First thing, when it comes to your fast, whether you've decided or not, try not to set yourself up for failure. Like I said, don't leave the Oreos on the counter. If you're like, I'm, I'm no sweets, it's like, put those things somewhere else. Go put the remote in the safe and give somebody else the code. You know what I mean? It's like, don't set yourself up for failure. Set this up in a way that, that, that's going to be beneficial, right? In a way that's going to help you. Help yourself in this and let God move. Create space for that. But when we set up things and, 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 don't, and don't take the necessary precautions, sometimes we're just making it way harder on ourselves, right? So again, don't set yourself up for failure. The second thing is invite others in. We all know we're fasting, right? So again, back to that point of like, oh, I can't tell them. It's like, we know it, right? As long as the heart, it's about the heart. The heart is in that right place, and I'm, I'm right there with the Lord, and it's, it's his purpose, not mine. It's not my personal one. As long as all that is making sense and that's there, ask for help. Say, hey, man, here's what I'm fasting. Would you be down to like text me at the meal times where I'm supposed to normally be eating and just be like, hey, Jesus loves you. Spend some time with him. Have that accountability. Invite others in and say, help me do this well. I'll help you do this well. Can we do that? Are we a family church? Can we help each other out? Can we give God that space and help each other to give God that space together? Last thing, don't let a mishap make you quit, right? Don't let something, a, a simple mistake, you know, I'm not going to lie, I had a second code to the safe, <laughs> you know? It's like, it's like, how? <laughs> I, watched, I watched some TV or when I was supposed to. I, I ate this thing I wasn't supposed to, right? Let's not do it again, but let's keep going. I totally, totally believe that when we make those mistakes that God does not come in and go, well, blessing removed. You know what I mean? He's like, I'm not, I don't have any breakthrough for you. You made too many mistakes. You didn't do this the right way. Does he want us to do well? Amen. But again, he's like, only way that happens is if you're with me. So don't let a mishap make you quit. Don't let it make you give up and go, I just already messed up. It's too late. Or maybe I've started too late in this journey. It's too late for me to jump in now. Come on. God's got stuff for us every single day. Let's jump in. It's a brand new day. Let's jump in. It's a brand new day. Let's jump in and give God an opportunity, right? In the words of Aaliyah, dust yourself off and try again. Try again. Come on. Do it. <laughs> Somebody told me nobody was going to get that, but hey, let's go. Thank you, guys. You probably went, how do you know that? Right? If you need some direction, some help with this, take those bulletins home with you, please. 
reach out to us at the church. We'll be praying for you guys. We're praying for each other as we walk through this together. But lots of resources in that bulletin, lots of things that you can look at for prayer. God, I want to I wanna do a different thing in prayer this time. God, I want to fast something different this time with you. I just need change. Look at those resources. Talks about different fasts you can do. Talks about different prayers you can do. Let's spend good time with the Lord. And let's grow and watch him do amazing things for our church and for us as individuals. Amen. Can we stand up? We're going to pray together, church. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> geez. One thing I want to encourage you, and I'm dying up here, folks. <clears throat> and I just drank water to help it. That doesn't make sense. Real quick, just something that God laid in my heart first service I want to share with you. Uh, is for those of us who maybe think we've been in this spot already, like prayer and fasting. It's nothing new to some of us, right? Don't see it that way. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let God come in and say, hey, I've got something different for you this time. You may do the same fast. You may give something up, but I want to show you that I'm a big God who has more for you with each day. So surrender that to him. Let's sing a new song to the Lord. Open our hearts to receive whatever the new thing may be and understand that we don't have it all. We don't know it all yet. But our God does, and he's got more for us. Amen. Let's pray, church. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Um, God, we surrender this, this season to you, God. These next three weeks, these 21 days, Jesus, we just ask um, that your will is done in them simply, God. We surrender it to you, God. We surrender the direction of, of, of our fast, God, of our prayer time to you. We surrender those open spaces where we've made space, God. We've eliminated something else. Let that, be, let that not be for just nothing, God. Let that be for time with you, for connection with you. Let us as branches be connected to the vine, Jesus. God, we, we, just, we just ask that you move. We pray for breakthrough, God. I pray for people who are in a spot where they're struggling, uh, maybe with the same sin, God. I pray for generational sins, God, things that are, just, that are just attached to people that it feels like there's no freedom. I pray for freedom in Jesus' name through these 21 days. God, I pray for um, just kindness in the hearts of those who are figuring out how to do this, God, for, from others to those who are figuring out how to do this, God, for support for family, God. We just want to see you move, Jesus. Lord, sing a new song. Lord, help us to sing that new song to you. Help us to know that you have more with each moment. We love you. We praise you. And we just thank you, God. We're excited and expectant for what you want to do in these 21 days. We love you, Jesus. It's in your perfect name we pray. And everybody said, amen.